This is my first time powering on the top eight motors at the same time. Well, they're all in sync, so that's a good thing. They won't initialize yet because I actually don't have the cube powered on. I'm gonna do everything possible to make this thing fly today. So I have the whole thing put together. I have the flight controller mounted on it. There's a couple things we still need to do. First, I have to provide power to the flight controller, which I haven't done yet. So I have a couple of options there. The problem is, despite my flawless organization skills, I can't find the parts that I need. So I could either do what I always do and take parts off of another drone, rendering it useless. But then I had a different idea. This is the PixHawk 6C flight controller that I actually got for this build specifically because the PixHawk 6C has 16 PWM outputs, uh, which makes it possible with some custom code to control 16 motors and ESCs, obviously. So since this is intended for this drone anyway, I'm just gonna go ahead and take some parts out of this box and use it for the Cube Orange flight controller instead until it comes time to replace it with the PixHawk 6C. The next issue is I don't have a pretty way to mount the battery. So I think I'm just going to duct tape it in place right here and that'll be good enough for now. So I have like really intense ADHD. And I've spent the last hour looking for an XT60 connector to connect this little power thingy to the orange cube. And I could not find my bag of connectors anywhere. I found one that was like this inside my house. I put it in my pocket. In my pocket. And I swear it just completely vanished. Somehow it did not make it out here to the shop with me. It was just out, gone out of my pocket. Like, like Tinkerbell took it away. I have no freaking clue where it went. But while I was looking, I found an unused roll of duct tape, which I'm gonna to use to strap the battery onto the drone today. And then of course I found my bag of connectors after looking for an hour. It was exactly where I thought it was, just under a whole bunch of crap that I have no idea how it got there. I'm gonna test the motors with the propeller on it for the first time. I've got this just in case. Testing motor A at 13% throttle for one second. Three, two, one. Sweet. Increasing to 15% for two seconds, all motors. Three, two, one. Yeah, baby. One more test. This is just a regular arm with my controller. Arming in three, two, one. Beautiful. All right, let's take a break because my 3D prints aren't doing too good in the 98 degree sun. Here's my 3D printed body. That's not too fantastic. Jeez. So my wife and I brought the drone back in the shop and then immediately propped up all of the arms with spools of 3D printer filament in an attempt to allow the 3D printed body to re-solidify as flat as possible, but it still wasn't great. So it's been about a week since I took this outside and uh, intended to fly it. 
and then had some issues with the sun. I don't know how obvious it is, but I'm just going to do a quick walk around and try to see if you can tell how wavy it is because it's very wavy. Of course, this is PLA and it kind of blew my mind that I had this issue. Um, I mean, not really because I've had PLA melting issues in the past, but it's very solid. It's much more rigid than like ABS or PETG. So when I tested it about, I don't know, a month ago with roughly 100 pounds on top of it and it supported it perfectly fine, I thought I would be good. But obviously if you're in record breaking heat, uh, that's not so much the case. I also damaged all 16 of the 3D printed brackets holding the stabilizing carbon fiber rods in place. You can see it's totally coming off of the tube. So I decided to do a little experiment. I made a few brackets and then I put the PLA bracket and an ABS bracket outside in the direct sunlight on a picnic table and just waited for like an hour, even though I probably didn't have to wait that long. And then I just bent them to see how bad the PLA was, which was really bad, versus the ABS, which surprisingly, to me at least, uh, didn't change at all. And that surprised me a little bit just because I've tried this sort of thing with PETG filament in the past, and that was also very droopy in the sun, even though it has a printing temperature comparable to ABS. So that's why PETG wasn't even in the running. So after melting the crap out of the 3D printed plastic parts for my drone, I decided to take the leap and order some aluminum CNC parts, which I'm really excited about. So I ordered two identical parts uh, just because it was a lot cheaper to do that instead of um, to have a few holes different on each one. So I have a couple of things that I still need to do. First, on the bottom plate, just like on the plastic here, I need to drill these holes to mount my overkill power distribution boards. Second, on the top plate, I have to drill these holes so that I can mount my flight controller and other electronics. But here's where the fun really starts. I specifically shrunk these holes to be exactly four millimeters instead of compensating for the extra whatever weirdness that my 3D printers do um, because I expected that it would be very precisely milled. And I did that because these screws are 3.9 millimeters in diameter. So they should fit in these holes with 0.1 millimeters to spare, but they don't fit. So I'm gonna have to go through both of these plates and drill out all of these holes myself again with my bench press, with my drill press, not bench pressing today. <laughs> anyway, I was in my house and I found the right drill bit that I needed, 5.30 seconds. And as I was walking out to the shop, I somehow dropped it in the grass. And so I had to go and dig up my metal detector that now I have to assemble that I originally bought three or four years ago to find drone parts in the grass. But yeah, now I have to go hunt down my drill bit in the grass so I can drill these stupid holes so I can build my stupid drone. And this is why I love building drones. I have the whole thing reassembled with the aluminum plates. I zip tied the crap out of the battery because I just really wanted to get flying. And it's fine, it's not gonna move. And I also have a center block beneath the drone that's tied to it with about a foot of slack just so I can see, uh, just so I can see how it behaves when it gets off the ground, make sure it's not freaking out or anything. This should be a quick test. Arming in three, two, one. All right, well, it responds to all my controls correctly. I can already tell it's gonna need some tuning, but that was great. Um, that's all I needed, so I'm going to untie the center block. All right, this is the real maiden flight of the spider. Arming in three, two, one, now. It flies, needs some tuning, but it flies. All 
All right, here's test flight number two, just for fun. The yaw authority is not great. I didn't give it much throttle, so that's good. Just means that it has a lot of power. I'm gonna fly it back over here. Probably just need to put some more weight on there and it'll behave better. So I am really happy that it worked as well as it did. It was about as I expected, um, which is really nice for a change. Normally it just explodes. <laughs> but yeah, when I was flying it, it felt pretty floaty um, because I did not have the throttle up very high because the thrust to weight ratio is pretty crazy. I don't actually know what it is right now, but I'll put it on the screen once I calculate it afterwards. So that's gonna be even crazier when I have 16 propellers on this thing. We're definitely gonna have to weigh it down to be able to increase the throttle to have some kind of yaw authority. But it, it works, it's responsive to my controls. I honestly couldn't be happier. It just felt a bit underwhelming, to be completely honest, considering all the work that went into getting it this far. But this is amazing progress. And I'm especially happy that I didn't crash it because I will be taking it to open sauce in about a week. So a few more weeks have passed and I have some exciting news. I finally grew a brain. Yeah, I put some wheels on it. Um, that makes it so much easier to move this thing around. And check this out. Now I can just wheel it outside the shop and, oh cool, I just broke it. Eh, whatever. I'll just set it on there for now. Let that be a lesson to not kick three millimeter thick PLA. And obviously I put the seat on it. So that's pretty cool. I want to do some testing with it. I also have a really nice placement for the battery just behind the seat, mounted on there very nicely with a Velcro strap. And yeah, open sauce was a few weeks ago. I had a lot of fun. Um, I saw a few of you guys there, so that was super cool. I made this shirt for it. You can see my logo right there. Let's see what else is new. Oh, did you notice my Michael Reeves costume? I got a nice big pimple right here. I thought maybe if I look more like Michael Reeves, the algorithm would treat me like him. So you can see I have my trusty Pikachu riding in the pilot seat. <laughs> and that's just because his last flight got cut a little bit short. So for this flight, I just wanna see if the added weight will actually allow the drone to handle a little bit better. Cause with the chair and the extra little bit of aluminum and my Pikachu, it weighs just a hair under 55 pounds. Okay, I guess we're good to go. It responds correctly to my controls. Here we go. Something's inverted. I think it's my roll. And I do not know what just flew off of it. Let's check on my, uh, hmm. My roll looks like it's set correctly. Oh, it was part of the landing gear that just flew off. Here it is. Well, we know it works. It needs a lot of tuning. With this extra weight on here, I don't want to risk breaking anything else. So sorry for the super lame ending and we'll be flying 
better in the next video.